everyone. It's Lonnie and Gunny. Your name's not Gunny. Our name together is Gunny. <laughs> Today we are bringing to you finally the tour of our rig, including the truck and the camper. It's been our most requested video, understandably. People keep asking questions, and we thought that we would just answer all of them. Yeah, that's a good point. So we feel like this will be an all-encompassing video that you can just refer to. There will if... be no questions after this. <laughs> <laughs> We're going to try to be as thorough as possible. But if you do thorough. have questions, please let us know. So we decided to do a tour, but also a review. Um, we feel like that's an important thing to do after we've lived in the camper for... I always forget, because it's always changing. So it's been... A year and a few months but then we spent a few months you know docked and making some upgrades so it's been a year that we've lived in this camper so so I think we have the authority and the knowledge a thing or two to give a proper review of what it's like to live in this camper full-time if you don't follow us normally we do live full-time in this rig we're traveling the US. So this camper specifically is New Camp's Cirrus 820 truck camper. We have it loaded on a 2015 GMC Sierra Denali heavy duty, which is the 3500. So we purchased the camper new and the truck was pre-owned by one previous owner. Some specs about the camper, right now, it weighs 4,200 pounds with everything that we have equipped it with and all of our supplies and, um, you know, everything. So we've maxed out our truck's payload capacity. We are at the gross uh, vehicle weight limit, which is the total weight the truck plus any payload uh, can be. Right. So total, what do we weigh in at? Uh, I think last time we weighed it, and this kind of fluctuates depending on how much gas we have in the tank and how much water and gray water and stuff like that. I think it was 10,700 uh, pounds. Of that, truck is 6,500, so we use 4,200 for the camper. Right. We have a lot of stuff. We do have a lot of stuff. So before we get to the review, we thought we would talk about why we chose a truck camper, why we chose this specific truck camper, and... Um, how it's been working out for us and kind of the reasons why we decided to make some of the modifications that we did. We wanted a rig that could take us anywhere that we might want to go because when we started thinking about this trip, we really didn't know where we would be going, what we would be doing. So we thought we would get something that could just take us anywhere just in case we wanted to, to go there. So that means off-roading, that means places where there isn't electricity or cell service or running water or anything like that. Now that we've been doing this for a while, we have, that has come in handy, um, being a rig that can go down dirt roads or up mountains or... Go to some nice campsites because we were able to go up yeah. steep gravel roads. Yeah. So I think that decision was a good one. By putting a camper on a four-wheel drive off-road capable truck, you can go to these places. So we like that we could choose the truck separately from the camper too, because if you choose an all-in-one, you are stuck with that specific vehicle and camper. It's not that many, I mean, what, vans or what are those? Class C, B. One of those, basically all in ones <laughs> that are uh, off road or f you know four by four capable. Yeah. We're also uh. able to stop at a Dunkin' Donuts and park in the parking lot like a you know regular truck, but a little right. bit bigger because the camper's sticking out uh, a few feet. But we're twenty six feet long, which if you're in a parking spot like a standard spot. We'd probably stick out like two or three feet. Maybe just two. It's okay, they don't mind. No, no one's ever mentioned it to us and we've never been in the way. So 
yeah, that's really nice. We can just stop at a grocery store and not have to, you know, find a 40 foot spot to to park our rig. And of course it's only us two and Wayne, so we really didn't need anything or want anything bigger than this. And it's definitely more than enough space. I don't feel cramped at all. No, it's, it's been pretty good. Yeah. Okay, so why did we choose Cirrus? So we get this question a lot because when people are looking for a truck camper or camper in general, they wonder, you know, why we pulled the trigger on this one. And it really came down to, I think, the aesthetics of it. I just liked how the interior looked and that it didn't look like it just stepped out of the 80s. Yeah. So if you've noticed, like brand new 2019 campers literally look like they're from the 80s with these strange patterns and like bad colored wood and it just wasn't our taste and when we saw the cirrus i don't know it really spoke to me i love the modern interior it's very european feeling it's very streamlined it's very intuitive and i think smartly designed for the most part we have done some aesthetic upgrades but they aren't that difficult to do so I mean, I hate to say it, but for me, it was mostly the style. But that's a big thing for me, the environment that we're living in. I want it, I want it to reflect us and for us to be comfortable in it. There's not that many truck campers to choose from. I remember we looked at some and they were too heavy. Right, so we didn't need this slide out, which a lot of truck campers are. That just seems excessive and there's more things to go wrong with it. Also, I noticed in a lot of truck campers, the the bed over the cab is not as spacious. We have a standard queen, which I think is pretty rare in campers. And the height, the ceiling height in the bed area is higher than I, I saw anywhere else. Um, there are a lot of windows in here that was lacking in other ones. Um, the window above the bed is life-changing yeah it's great yeah some technical aspects of it the freshwater tank is 38 gallons which i found to be i think that was pretty large for mm. a truck camper also the fact that there was solar optional so we we chose the to have one solar panel installed on the roof and once we get up there we'll show you that we later installed another but just having that option where they already um so they already run the wires as they're building the camper and i mean you can install solar panels on every truck any truck camper you want but you will have to be drilling a lot of holes and and doing a lot of work that they could do for us and yeah so that was nice so that it was already pre-wired basically yeah. for more Another thing uh, kind of related to the size of the tanks and things, uh, it has two uh, propane tanks. Right. Usually there's just one. And they're two 20-pound tanks, so they're huge. So, you know, it runs hot water, heating, and the fridge on propane. So it's it's really nice not to really have to worry about. And, you know, sometimes you run out of one and we just switch over. Uh, and it's great. Right. So that makes it even more boondocking capable. Um, so it's two batteries. Yeah. Which sometimes feels like it's too little. Like they could have, I don't know, added. Yeah. When we bought it, the dealer never gave us any option what kind of batteries we want. In fact, I asked them, so what kind of batteries are in there? And they they didn't know what I was talking about. The dealer we purchased this from didn't know a lot which is unfortunate for us because we didn't know a lot since it was our first time buying an RV. And it was their first time selling in a, a truck, truck camper. camper. <laughs> so, in fact, I've noticed this in a lot of places. We go to Camping World to pick something up and somebody asks me, so what kind of camper you have? And I said, truck camper. And they say, what? They, they actually have never heard, they have no idea what that is. People who work in, yeah, it's with because campers. I mean, they were very popular in like the 70s and 80s. I think it was a fringe thing in the 70s and the 80s. Really? Yeah. Well, now they're coming back. And we get so many compliments and comments on our rig. We're always being stopped and asked about it. It is a very, very nice camper. 
the outside is also very stylish and modern. And just, you know, little touches that don't go unnoticed. I really appreciate all the details that Cirrus put into the camper. But on that note, it's not perfect. Nothing is. And it, out of the factory, was not perfect for us, so that's why we did some modifications and upgrades, which we will show you and describe to you. So all of the upgrades and modifications that we're going to be talking about, um, we did ourselves. So we didn't take it to shop or, you know, have anyone come in. It's all DIY. We've learned a lot. So we got to Boondock. I think Truck Camper is great for it because, well, we talked about how you can take it anywhere, especially if you put it in a good 4x4 truck. At the same time, a lot of the kind of things in here were geared towards being plugged in at a campground, which right. you really don't need, um, you know, you can take a regular, you know, your 50 foot fifth wheel uh, and, and, you know, park it at a campground. Yeah. So if that's what we wanted to do, we might have gotten something bigger, more spacious and more luxurious, but... With washer and dryer. Yeah. <laughs> be nice. So, right. So some things in the Cirrus, um, I guess... Hey, we you can come up here. I don't remember what I was going to say because you're very distracting. She was going to say that some things in the Cirrus... Contradict the fact that it's a truck camper that can go anywhere. Things like the air conditioner. Um, the fact that it didn't have an inverter when we bought it and we had to install that. It has a microwave. has a microwave. That we use as bread storage. <laughs> so, things like that. I don't know, they just don't make sense to us, so. I think they're trying to please different, you know, types of people that might want a truck camper for maybe slightly different reasons. But yeah. the result is that you have something that kind of sort of works for most people. Well, they could have something that works perfectly for hopefully people like us, you know, who want to go and boondock, uh, but it could also, you know, obviously be any other type of person. Yeah, I think that maybe they could do a boondock addition and remove the AC, remove the microwave, put more solar panels on the roof. You don't buy a truck camper to stay in RV parks, and we didn't, so... You could, because it is nice and convenient, and you can, you know, do three-point turns on just a That's tiny true. little road and, and stuff like that. you can tow something and not be super long. You can have your boat, horses. It's great for boating. Yeah, definitely. I don't know if that's the majority of the truck camper buyers. It's interesting. I wonder what the target is. Who buys is. these things? <laughs> I don't know. Yeah. And I think they also had that question, which is why... It is kind of a vague camper. It hasn't figured out its identity yet. Yeah. <laughs> it works a little bit for everyone, which makes sense when you're manufacturing something. So, we have made it work for us. All right, so one of the first things we did uh, was that we installed an inverter, uh, and that's what allows us to, when we're boondocking, um, to charge our laptops and use cell internet. And Alani can steam her clothes with a tiny little low power AC steamer. <laughs> so um, it allowed us to convert the battery's DC power into 120 volt plug power. So we can plug it into the regular plugs that everyone is familiar with was probably our best upgrade, I think. Everything else was downhill from there. Okay, oh, what's next? <laughs> it would be nice to have those options from the factory. Definitely, so take note, Cirrus. These are things people might want because we did. It would be, I would, you know, it required time and effort to put those things in and I would yeah. happily pay money to have someone else do it and totally. have more time. Totally. Okay, so we're going to give you just a quick tour of um, the outside, 
the truck a little bit and then we'll come inside and show you all the good stuff. Okay, so let's head outside. And we are live. Okay, so we're outside. Wanted to first show you the truck. So like I said, it's a GMC Sierra Denali Heavy Duty. Um, That's what HD stands for. Yeah, so it's the 3500 um, equivalent. So this truck is actually not a diesel. Oh, it's cold. We went with a gas engine um, for several different reasons. In the case of us, we are, we are hauling a camper um, and we're already at our max kind of weight limit for the truck and adding a diesel would take us over by quite a bit. I don't remember exactly how much it was. Uh, it was several hundred pounds. Gas is pretty cheap these days and so the diesels get better fuel economy but the diesel fuel is also quite a bit more expensive. You might get you know, 35% more miles um, out of a gallon of diesel fuel. Um, but it's also about the same, uh, as many times more expensive. Could be a wash. So our truck is uh, flex fuel. We can uh, run it on ethanol, 85, E85, which depending on the prices of gas and, and E85 might be cheaper per mile. Okay, so I'll we'll show you the inside of the truck. Do I come in right? Okay, so here's our ride. Like I said, it's the Denali trim, which we decided to um, go with because we figured this is basically our home. Um, so we wanted all the luxuries that came with the trim, um, including. Oh! <laughs> <laughs> including. So we have heated and cooled seats, which is really nice. Um, power everything. Oh, lane just fell. So yeah, we have a heated steering wheel, which is really nice on cold mornings. Um, it has a great entertainment system. We have a sunroof. The guy who first purchased this truck, there was only one owner before us. He got all the options. So we have a TV, a DVD player, um, all kinds of things that we will never use. So um, as you could probably guess, our gas mileage is pretty poor, but you would expect that um, when you're hauling something like this. We get 9.5 miles per gallon on average. So not the best, but... So overall, we love this truck. It's been the perfect um, choice for us. We have had zero issues with it. It's been extremely reliable, has not broken down. I feel like I need to knock on wood because <laughs> after this, it might just fall apart. But so far, um, it's been really great. It hauls the camper amazingly. <laughs> Pardon the squirrels. The stability is great. The handling is great. Everything is stock in the truck. We haven't made any upgrades there and it's a testament to how great GMC trucks are when like a Ford or Ram owner will message us and ask um, what kind of upgrades we made to our truck to make the ride better with a truck camper and we say none. When these people um, message us they talk about installing airbags for the suspension and they've had issues where the camper will dolphin, I guess is the term, when you're on an interstate or something where there's grooves, and it just like basically starts bumping up and down. We've never had that happen to us. So yeah, it's a great truck. <laughs> I can't think of anything that we would change. We decided to go with the crew cab because there is a lot of storage back there. So that's where we keep the majority of our things that do not fit in the camper, which is a lot because the camper doesn't have a lot of outside storage for things like we have a generator now, um, chairs, table, the tripod for the satellite, leveling blocks, just like tools, totally random things that we don't have a, a spot for in the camper. So um, we'll show you back there. Like I said, we keep a lot of things back here. So we'll just show you very quickly. 
um, so chairs, log carrier, tools, leveling blocks, generator, suitcase when we travel, yoga mat. It's just random. It's random. Um, drill. So if you do have kids and you need this back seat, I think that you'd probably put um, something on the roof rack to store these kinds of things. It is possible for us to um, seat one person back here because we've done it before. Um, you just have to organize it very carefully and strategically and also put some things in the camper when it's actually driving, which isn't a big deal because nobody's back there anyway. Quickly, while we're here, Wayne's in there, we will get him later. We're at a state park that has hookups, so you can see our electric cord here is plugged in, and then we have our water filters. And we use those no matter where we are, anytime we fill up the tank. So we're always using filtered water throughout the camper. So it keeps any impurities and bacteria, mold, fungus, what have you, um, outside. So that's really nice to have. We can start with propane. 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 So here we have our two 20 pound propane tanks that we mentioned. We also have a, we just got this, we can weigh them to see how much we have left. It would be nice to have a little gauge inside or something. They do tend to run out unexpectedly. <laughs> so it'd be nice to know where they are without having to do this, but we think it's really great that Cirrus put space for two tanks because that allows us to boondock for longer. Okay. Water inlet, electricity, this is a light, this is our fridge vent, this is if you want to, oh yeah that one doesn't open, <laughs> that's if you want to put a TV outside. Never use it. Never. So this is the largest outside storage compartment um, on the camper. We keep our hoses in here, um, the water filter when we're not using it, and then our black water hose. This one is basically electric. Um, this is the inverter that Gunther's installed. This is a nice little spot for it if you're doing the same thing. What is that? The jack box? The jack box. The jack in the box. A lot of random wires and things. Yeah, so just like electrical things. In there. This is for the satellite, by the way. It's not always here. So this bottom one here is um it's basically the controls for the drain when we're dumping so this is the gray water valve release and this is the black release and you can also release cold hot and fresh water um this is also where we keep the gloves for dumping and sanitizer and then another cool thing in here is the outdoor shower so um when it's much warmer than now you can um, shower outside. We have only used this though to clean Wayne when he's muddy, but it's very good for that if you have dogs and you don't want to clean them inside. It's very convenient. And it has um, hot and cold controls. Okay, so this is the back of the camper. So these are electric remote control jacks which is really nice to have. You don't have to hand crank them, which I know some truck campers have that. Yeah, jacks. Anything else about jacks? They jack pretty well. Yeah, these are really nice jacks. They each have a 2,000 pound capacity. They're also useful sometimes. You can level the camper a little bit, not too much. Just a tiny bit. Just a tiny bit. Just a little bit. Just a bit. Um, okay, so everyone's favorite aspect of the back is this diamond plate bumper which we also think is pretty cool um, and the lights we really like it's just very stylish and then you have the torque lift accordion stairs so when we're driving
Did you mention that they glow in the dark? Oh yeah, they're called glow steps, so when it's dark, these all light up. So you can see where you're stepping. It's a very nice feature. So, the handle. We have a uh, keyless entry, which is nice, so I won't type in the code, because then you'll break in. Just kidding. Um, we have a code that locks and unlocks without the keys, which is very convenient. It's light out now, but I'll try to show you the lights. So we have a strip here, and one there, and then two on that side and one on that side. And they're very, very bright. They're like spotlights. You don't want those on when you have neighbors. They're obnoxious. A little switch, isn't there? We'll go on the roof in a second. So this side, here we have two 120 volt plugs. If you um, are having a party outside or what have you, very convenient. This is the Aldi vent. This is where the batteries are. Small issue with this battery compartment. See how it closes and it leaves a gap here mm -hmm. while the water likes to run down the wall and just go in there. So what happens is that the, in a heavy rain, the batteries end up swimming in a small Gets real bath. Dirty. And uh, they kind of kind of get a little grimy. Perhaps a door that seals a little better would be in order. Hmm. Also in the bumper is what I guess Sears says is your black hose storage, but our hose doesn't fit in here and we have like a standard length hose and also it's extremely hard to open so we don't have anything in there right now so we also have an awning um it's electric powered so you don't have to crank it or anything which is nice we have speakers on the outside um and you can see our tie down system here which they're Happy Jack tie downs. Do not purchase them. Oh, um, don't. Oh, you can see there's another um, TV input there. This might be for hooking up your camper to the cable TV because you're parked in a place that has a cable TV connection. Oh, lame. <laughs> Out here, we really like the huge windows. Also, don't mind the graphics. Some RVs get a little, I don't know, they get a little intense with the graphics. This is pretty neutral. They also have all kinds of interesting names like the Crusader. Yeah, the Avenger. Exterminator. <laughs> like, why? Why? I think that concludes the walk around outside. Oh. Let's show you. Right here is where we connect our um, black water hose to um, drain the waste tanks. How many times have you done it, Lonnie? <laughs> Let's go on the roof. So cold. It's a little tie that keeps the ladder up when we're driving. <laughs> Okay, ladder comes down like so. Yeah. So we're on the roof now. Um, quickly show you. This is the bathroom vent fan. Um, this is the roof rack. We keep the satellite dish on here only right now, but you can definitely put a lot more stuff up here because of this. If you notice, we have two solar panels now. Originally, we only had this first one here. This is the um, the one that came with the Cirrus when we opted for a solar panel. As you can see, we removed the huge air conditioner and we replaced it with a Max Air Max Fan Deluxe. And, um, 
by doing so, we are able to put a second solar panel up here. So we do think that this roof could be laid out a little better in order to fit more solar panels. Also, our fan doesn't close all the way because of that panel, but it's really not a big deal. This is the TV antenna. This is where that both solar panels plug into, so you could have a third one if the roof were a little more well thought out. It would be nice if Cirrus gave you options, like um, fan instead of AC, so you could have more solar panels, but we made it work for us, for sure. Okay, that's the roof. Let's get down. So, this is our entryway. Here's the door. Keep scratching to get out, but then he doesn't leave. Come on, come on. Good boy. Okay, so this little window. Here are our switch for the um, outside lights, switches, um, the awning, and then a camera if you have one. So an improvement we did here is add these hooks. So we needed something to hang up coats, scarves, keys, Wayne's leash. So I found these on Amazon and they're just um, a really strong adhesive. So we didn't even have to drill into the, um, the doors. Okay, so this here is our main, now he wants in. Hi. <laughs> This is our main closet. Um, it's the only place where you can hang up close. So it has the bar. This is our dirty laundry bag. And then this is different things like reusable bags, hats, scarves, gloves, etc. One thing that I added in here to improve it is these hotel hangers. So if you've been to a hotel and you've seen where you can Take the hanger off from a hook. And it doesn't have the hanger part anymore. That's because they don't want you stealing hangers, but for us, it's because we don't want the hook hangers jumping off of the railing when we drive. Because it gets very bumpy in here when it's driving. So all the clothes have stayed on the hooks because of these and we had to take the bar off to install them they just um slide down the bar also in here are um our shoes kind of like haphazardly throw all my shoes they're just in there haphazardly Look at all these there. clothes who owns all these clothes <laughs> um and then we have an umbrella there too the front door also has a screen for when it's warm out and you want your door open, but you have to keep the bugs out. So it's a nice feature. Next we'll go in the bathroom. Wayne's already in there, ready to join us. Okay, so here's the bathroom. The light. So I'll come in here probably really hard to get everything. Okay, I'll start here. This is the shower. <laughs> um, shower head comes off. Um, you know, it's very nice. It's a really nice design too. Did a good job choosing it. These are the, um, you know, shower I controls. <laughs> the shower control <laughs> panel. Hot, cold. This here is um, one of uh, all the vents um, to help it get warm in here. We have the heat on. Okay, this we installed. It's just stuck on here. We keep our shampoos, conditioners, body washes here. Um, it comes with hooks for, you know, little loofahs like, loofahs like this. A little soap. Oh, you can see it on this side. The soap holder. And here's the infamous sink. So, as you can see, it's very large. If I had to pee, I cannot. So, 
folds up. Careful with the plants. Yeah. This is his temporary home. Like that. So you have space, you know, to do what you need to do. But let's show you what happens when there's a little bit of water. Close it. <laughs> and it just drips there and it gets all this wet. So, yeah. It's annoying. It's not ideal. Oh, sorry. Okay. So, this is a basket we put in here. Very simple. It's not, you know, stuck on or anything. It contains things. And then this is the towel bar that came with the Cirrus. I think it's pretty ugly and I wanted to replace it, but you know, it just isn't worth it right now. And then this is where the mesh plastic um, organizer was before. It just was not big enough and it was actually falling off the wall. So we got these at Home Depot, I think. And they just, you know, screw in. We had to drill it in, but they're very sturdy and they hold a lot of things as you can see and then there's shower curtain so you don't get the door wet when you're showering um, toilet toilet it's your basic RV boat toilet Wayne's butt is here but you press this to flush. <laughs> I won't flush it, but you press the pedal to flush it. I'll squish him if I do. So it just works by pressing this pedal. Like so. That does it in the bathroom. Oh, we added more hooks here for our um, wet towels to dry. Here is our kitchen. We upgraded the sink in here. The sink that came the standard in this camper was very similar to this stove here. It had a glass top and it was extremely shallow. It was like four inches deep, which if you're washing anything bigger than like a spoon, it's really hard to um, do anything with. So we upgraded. We bought this sink on Amazon. I will put everything that we put in here in the description box. Um, if you're wondering the exact products that we purchased. This is about 10 inches deep. It's like 16 inches wide. Um, maybe more, 18, 16, I don't know. It's really big. It's a lot bigger than the other one and it's been so amazing like life-changing because we don't have a dishwasher this is where we wash everything like huge pots well we have one pot and it's kind of big but the other sink was too small to even wash our small pot um and then the sink also had a faucet attached already and it did not move at all it just moved up and down it was very tiny it had a tiny little spray just not sufficient at all so we installed this um, new faucet, which comes out. The other one did not do this. Um, has two spray levels. And I think the aesthetic goes um, much nicer in here. We installed this paper towel holder. Very simple upgrade that is life changing also. And we also put this basket up to hold our. Um, soaps. Um, this is just the suction holder that I got at Target. So this is where we keep our dry food. I added a basket in here for extra organization because um, if that basket were not in here and you have cans stacked up, they would pile on top of you when you um, open the cabinet after driving. If they're not contained, they will just hit you in the head. Another hook for our little mitt. And then our handy dandy 
Bread storage bread box. box. We don't find the microwave very useful because we, well, first of all, we don't really use microwaves. We like to cook on the stove. And secondly, it requires AC power, which is short power to run. And <coughs> I need water. I've been talking too much. Here's a fun little thing though. Technically, you could have a, a microwave that, if you have a big enough inverter, you could run it um, because it only runs for a few minutes. And so, yes, it's like, you know, I don't know, one to two kilowatts. So you need a big ass inverter. But it only runs for two minutes, so you're adding people, you know, using not that much power. Okay. Well, if I think you, for us... We just don't use the microwave to begin yeah, with. We would rather have um, more cabinet space because that's what we're using it as right now. But it does have a light. Which is good when you're cooking. And it also has a vent. And I use the timer too. So, you know, and a clock. It's just excessive and we don't really need it. Okay. Also in the kitchen are um, all of our control panels. And this is our battery solar panel. Solar charge control. Solar charge control. Oh, look at that. Solar charge controller. That's what it is. Um, we also keep tabs on the battery with this, and it tells us what it's charging at. Lights. Nice. <laughs> this is our Aldi panel. Um, it shows the temperature in here. It's 79. Actually, that's hot. I don't think it's hot. Let's talk about the location of it. Yes. So, <laughs> the location of the thermostat is probably the worst it could be. It literally couldn't be worse. They could put it on the burner. <laughs> that would be so worse. So you know where this is going. <laughs> if you're cooking, say it's a really cold night and you want your heat on. You start cooking, the thermostat thinks that it's getting really warm in here and it's it needs toasty. to turn off the heat. So it turns off the heat and you start freezing because all you're doing is, you know, cooking, which isn't heating, and the temperature controller will not turn the heater on unless it thinks that it, you know, is at a certain temperature where it needs to. So this gets to like 89 degrees, say, and we have the heater on, I don't know, 74. It's going to stop heating. So we think that there could be a much better place for the, the thermostat. Any place. Any, literally anywhere else. Literally. I know like all of them together is ideal, but any place. We'll talk about that all day in a second. And then this is our tank monitor. It shows, it actually shows battery too, but we mostly use the other panel for that. Um, what our fresh water is at, the percentage that our gray tank is full, and same with black. This also is our water pump turn on, which we also don't need when we're, um, when we have a water connection, city connection. Okay, so a little bit about the heating system that's in the Cirrus. It's called Aldi, it's the 3010 model. This is its control panel. Just turn it off. You can set the temperature for the room. You can turn the hot water on and you can set it to um, run on either propane or electric. And you can also set it on a timer and whatnot. With that said, the Aldi runs, hold that button. Aldi runs on propane and electric, um, depending on whatever your power source is at the moment. So overall, we really like it. It's um, radiant heat. It isn't like a furnace or it's not like blowing heat into the room. It's like a slower heat up. There are little radiators everywhere, like um, under the sink. Not everywhere. There are no radiators in this area. That's true. There should be some like under here on the wall. That would be nice. The bathroom gets real toasty. Yeah. Under here gets real toasty because... Super toasty. There's a radiator under there, but... Um, it's so your cleaning supplies stay nice and warm in the winter. Yeah. It's a huge <laughs> radiator down there for no reason. We have had several issues with it. In the closet, there is the glycol reservoir and the Aldi works by heating up glycol and that's what runs through um, the radiators. 
but we have found our glycol disappearing and it's not supposed to disappear in like a week like maybe over two years it evaporates but we've had glycol just like go missing it's really bizarre and um the first time we don't really know where it went and then the second time we found that it actually just like purged itself out of its little pipe there's like an outlet outside the camper and we have some theories as to why it did that. Um, Kuntars thinks that it's like a fail safe if the glycol gets too hot. Um, which could have happened. So we've had to refill the glycol reservoir a lot, well, a lot more than they say that you have to. So that's been interesting and we really aren't sure why it does that. So I guess if you know exactly what to do and just keep plenty of reserves of glycol on hand, it's not a problem. Yeah, we now have like a whole bottle on hand at all times and we can get it on Amazon, which is nice. Um, but it's special glycol that you can't find in a basic RV store or Walmart. But anyway, it's it's quiet. I think that's the, the best feature of it. When we had the glycol disappearing, it, it, it would bubble because there was air in the system at that point. But if there's no air in the system, it's extremely quiet. You just hear a slight gurgling of the glycol, but that's fine. It can get really hot, which is nice. And the hot water heater heats up very quickly. So you could take like a 10 minute shower if you turn the, the water heater up all the way on this panel. So yeah, we don't, we don't hate it, but we just have some issues that are unresolved, I guess. When you're in an RV, reliability is... Uh... It's really important because there's all these systems and they are... We've been left in the cold because of all the... Yeah, yeah. We've had freezing nights. One night we just had to bundle up and uh, just, just... We wore our clothes, all of our clothes to bed. <laughs> so that, yeah, that's so true. You need that reliability, especially if you're in the middle of nowhere. Yeah. So. I mean, you know, just owning an RV seems like there's constantly something going on that you need to pay attention to and address and the less of those things happen the better yeah. it's true okay stove so we have a two burner stove it for me I love to cook and I cook with multiple things going on at the same time and when I have two, when I have the, the skillet here and the pot here, it, they don't really fit together. So you're like moving them around and like hoping this one's heating evenly and then that one isn't. I would really prefer like a three burner stove or just like a more space for the two burners. But otherwise it's a fine stove. Um, so you can see like there's all this space. Yeah. Here. And here. You could have had a bigger stove. And this could be down here. Yeah. And then these could be quite a bit larger. And then I'll show you if you don't have a camper. This doesn't turn on the fire, basically. The propane's on when you turn that, but the fire doesn't come on. You have to do it manually. So we have this little spark maker. Amazon. Rated for 50,000 sparks. It'll probably outlive us. So that's how you turn the stove on. And control it like any other stove. But it's nice that this closes so you have a work surface if you're not using the stove. Use to dry the dishes and things. Yeah, we put our drying mat here, which I'll show you our drawers. So this is our main kitchen storage. Um, this cabinet here and drawers. I guess I'll show this first. So this is the under sink storage. One thing that the deeper sink, um, one of its negatives was that it kind of eats into the space here for our storage, but we didn't find that to be an issue and everything we had in here fit the same. So just the drain is coming into this basket, but it's no big deal. So in here we keep our laundry supplies, cleaning supplies, um, vacuum attachments, just like random things like toilet paper, sponges, all of our, you know, cleaning solutions. First aid kit, 
We have a tiny trash can here, but that's not sufficient enough, so we usually have an extra trash. Um, we use Whole Foods. <laughs> this is the modem for the satellite. I think putting baskets in here was a game changer because you can organize everything. And being organized in a tiny space is key. Otherwise, you just, it becomes a mess. Everything needs a place. I think that's another video. Organizing. Another thing to organize was this little um, door basket, which is really great because it just closes right in there. And this just, you know, foil, deal enters, sandwich bags, trash bags, gloves, just more cleaning supplies. Okay. Oh, and the cord coming out here is our ghetto situation for our um, satellite modem power. It needs the power. We're gonna try to figure out a better solution for that eventually. This is another just like random storage solution or living solution. It just it's a little thingy that goes on your cabinet. And it keeps our kitchen towel. Okay, so the drawers in the kitchen. So top drawer. We have all of our cooking utensils. Um, measuring cups, things like that. Another thing I did was put, oh, what do you call this? Yeah, it's like a rubber drawer liner and it keeps everything from like moving around when you're driving. Um, I have that in basically all the drawers in the camper. This is a drawer everyone has, the junk drawer. It's a catch-all basically. <laughs> I tried to have organizers in here but they're just overpowered. <laughs> <laughs> they're overflowing, they cannot organize anything. Let's just close that. <laughs> and these are latches, if you're noticing. It just um, catches. They latch all right. They latch all right. Some of them have broken, so we've replaced them, but these three have been fine. And this is where we keep our pot and pan. Pot and pan. Pot and pan, and then our drying mat. You should keep your heavy things on the bottom of the camper too. Make sure you're not... There's center of gravity. Yeah, that one. Okay, fridge. We have a very decently sized fridge. Um, on the front here, we're collecting patches from um, places we go. So the fridge runs three ways. It's a three-way fridge. It's a three-way fridge. Three-way fridge. Three-way fridge. <laughs> it runs on AC, DC, and propane. So the rock band and propane? It runs on the rock band. <laughs> yeah. the um, so it's very versatile. It's great. And it's huge. Except the freezer. Freezer's tiny. So let's freezer in there. We have lots of shelves. I bought some baskets. Well, actually, I bought one basket to help organize. Just this one. This has butter cheese. Um, and then this one has different veggies. I've never felt like I need more space in the fridge. It's only the two of us, so... Um, Just the two of us. It's It's been enough. Okay, so two more drawers here. They're big. This one is... Oh, it's onion. So I keep like onions, garlic, potatoes in here as well as spices. So, we have all spices, um, vanilla, stevia, nutritional yeast, you know, stuff like that. Next drawer is vitamins and... By the way, these are the drawers that... That broke, the latches broke, yeah. This one actually we haven't even replaced the latch, so it just like flies open when we're driving. <laughs> Anyway, vitamins and um, things like NyQuil, cough drops, allergy medicine, medicines. Okay. Oh, yeah. We have a Wayne window. They call it a pass-through window, but... Nothing has ever been passed through it. I don't see it. anything <laughs> fitting through here. And we also had to seal it with a paper towel because there's a huge gap here and bugs were getting in. But Wayne likes to look out of it and that's probably its best use. It's really cute. It also gives airflow when you open this and get the fan on. 
this is our living room. This is uh, where we eat and also where I do a lot of the cooking prep. We do work here, you know, it's like anyone's kitchen table. You just do everything here. Okay, so here we did a lot of different upgrades. The first thing we changed in here was this light. So if you look at this light, um, this is what was here. So it was not sufficient enough to give enough light for this kind of space. So we found a fixture. This is from Amazon. Everything that we've pretty much bought on the road is from Amazon because we can easily get it delivered to um, prime lockers. It's nice because when you're driving, okay, come on. you can just hook it here and then it doesn't swing around. But anyway, the light was here, so we had to swag it over. Swag, swag. it. And um, I found this hook also on Amazon, and we just, you know, lifted it around. So now it hangs centered over the table, which is another thing that this light didn't do because it was here, so it's casting light like, you know, here, and it just didn't make sense to us, so we improved it. So one thing about replacing lights in your RV, you might think that you have to buy an RV special light. So you would search 12 volt light fixture, but you do not have to do that. You can use any fixture you'd like in your RV. You just do not use the ground wire. But the only thing you have to worry about is your light bulb. So you have to use a 12 volt bulb in your fixture. Do not use 120 volt because it will not work. So this is actually a an LED 12 volt Edison bulb, which you can also find on. So next thing we did was this beautiful table. So the table that came initially in the series was just a basic white table. It was actually the same material as the countertop, which is a laminated particle board, basically. We didn't find it to be very sturdy. If you drop something on it, it cracks, um, puts a dent in it, and it just wasn't attractive to me. So we replaced it with this beautiful walnut butcher block that we had custom made for the space. Um, it's the same dimensions as the other table, except the other table had rounded edges and we kept them square for this one. And the install for Gunter's was very easy. He just unscrewed the previous tabletop and drilled into this one and screwed this one on. And this dinette actually becomes a bed, which we've never done because we've never had extra guests in here. So I'm not going to show you that. This just becomes flat here and then the cushions um, come together and it's basically like a mattress. Next improvement in the dining room. Dining room. So, <laughs> these are the same cushions that came with the camper, but I had them reupholstered. Um, the previous fabric, it was a synthetic, I don't know, polyester, just wasn't nice to the touch, and I didn't like the colors. They were um, like sky blue and black. And you still see the colors here. Oh yeah, above the bed. That's the same fabric. Anyhow. So the other cushions had um, also this, I guess it's leather, it's not real leather, don't worry. So I replaced this also with a color that I thought suited um, the camper better and also went with the new fabric. And this is 100% wool, a little plaid pattern. <laughs> I really like it. It's really comfortable too, much more comfortable than the other one. The other one would like snag on your nails and it just wasn't nice. We have storage under this seat. Do you think we should get in there? We keep stuff in there. I mean... Okay. This much of this under here is open and we keep things in there that we rarely use. Like we have a, a jack for if we get a flat tire, you know, things like that. Road flares, road triangles like all for the heating system, you know, rarely use things. We um, put this basket on the wall so we can have plants in here. I'll show you quickly how the window shades work. 
So if you have the window open and it's buggy out, you have this screen that comes down. So that keeps bugs out mostly, unless they're tiny, they come in. And then there's a privacy screen. And this is like blackout. If you're outside of this camper at night and we have all the lights on, you really can't tell that we're in here if all of these are shut. So, pretty nice. So this is probably your main storage area, I would say. Um, this one has linens, um, paper towels, towels, sheets, etc. These two, I have more of these baskets. This basket has all of our, um, like, dinnerware and cups and, um, thermoses, etc. This one has containers, cooking supplies, measuring cup, um, colanders, etc. This one is Wayne's. So we have all of his treats, food, doggy bags, etc. So these really keep everything contained when you're driving. And you have to remember when you own a camper that everything's going to shift. It's like when they say on an airplane, everything shifts. It does. And if you didn't have these baskets, literally everything would fall out on top of you. So they are very useful and I highly recommend them if you have a house on wheels. I think that's it for the dining area. We do have a little bit more storage under the table. So we keep our um, lanterns in this basket, flashlight, this is a camera case, and this has all of our um, wires and chargers. We also keep the vacuum just like on hand under there because I'm constantly using it. It gets very dirty in here very quickly. We have two more speakers here. And then... Under the seat is the Aldi system, so there's no storage there. It's just that and some cables and cords and everything like that. But you can access it very easily. It just lifts up. And in here is the... What do you call it? Well, it's a converter and a power distribution box. This is where all the fuses are. And like you and said... breakers. Breakers. Here's our fan. Are you a fan? I'm a fan. I love this fan. Turn it on really fast. It also has a remote. Take that, Claus. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so this is the Max fan. I will put the link in the description box if you want this fan. You should want this fan. It um, has temperature controls. You can set it to turn on in certain temperature. Put on auto. So we wish that there were more, um, maybe USB plugs in places. 120 volt here. We have another 120 here. And then on the inside here, there's um, a 12 volt outlet, for, like a cigarette lighter outlet. Um, it'd be nice if that were USB because we just have now like put in a USB adapter. Like a toothbrush is USB and yeah, all our or, lantern um, chargers are USB. Our hotspot, our Verizon hotspot is USB. So it'd be nice to have another plug on this bench too, actually. Um, yeah, more plugs overall would be nice. Okay, so this is our bedroom. We have a queen size bed, which is pretty rare in campers, but it's nice because when we are looking for a new mattress, um, it was very easy to just get a new queen bed. So, um, we keep talking about the improvements we made in the camper and one was to replace the mattress. Um, the mattress that comes with the Cirrus is like yay tall and no padding. It's just like your very basic like dorm room mattress. And we initially bought a feather bed like two inch topper for it, which made it pretty comfortable. But a few weeks ago, 
I was making the bed and I saw mold growing under the mattress. So we had to throw away the mattress and clean the whole bottom of the, um, like the platform where the bed sits. And then we also have this, um, frolly sleep system, which keeps airflow, um, because it keeps the mattress up off the floor. But obviously that is not doing its job because, um, we still got mold. So where the frame is in here is not insulated. So you basically you can see where the frame is by where the water, the water. is collected. Yeah. So water collects there and when water collects under a mattress, you get mold, fortunately. But we um, put a waterproof cover on our mattress to make sure that it doesn't. We have to insulate the bottom better to cover where the frame is, basically, where it gets cold. So we don't have this issue anymore. But anyway, let's go into the bedroom. Okay, so turn the lights on. Kind of ugly. The lights are ugly. We do not like those lights. We rarely use them. I wanted to replace them, but it's just constant replacement if you keep doing things like that. But anyway, we both have um, a little closet up here. So this is where we keep the majority of our clothes. We have little bins for our socks and underwear and then everything else is just folded. Um, nothing falls out of here. We open it. And Couture says the same over here. And then this is Wayne's little bed. He sleeps there sometimes, but he mostly cuddles us. Also throws toys in here. Do you want to come up here? Show the TV. The Cirrus has a television that swings, but one design flaw with said swinging is you can swing it when you have nothing on your mattress, but as soon as you put any sort of bedding, like we have a, we have the feather bed on the new mattress too, and then we have um, a, a duvet that just prevents, I'll show you. Any swinging. It just gets stuck on the bedding. But, oh, this latch also broke. <laughs> if you do have it swung out to the living room and you're like watching TV while eating dinner and you know, two people are facing each other, the person sitting nearest the TV, there, Here. <laughs> has to, you know, like crane their head to see the TV. So we never had it swung out anyway. And, um, it does have an HDMI cord, so you can just plug in your computer and watch Netflix, which we have done with it. Um, and then it has a stereo system, which has Bluetooth and has USB and auxiliary, if you want to listen to music that way. You can also listen to the radio. Um, it has a DVD player, whenever you want never used the DVD never player. Used it. So this is another improvement, a very cheap and easy one. It measures humidity, temperature, high and low for the day of each. So on the side here, we have a cabinet that swings open. Um, it goes along the whole length here, but another design flaw. It's hard to open when you have bedding and hard to close because the sheets get caught in it. So it'd be nice if it didn't... If you want to come look at it. If it didn't open, like, down here. That'd be much better. But it's pretty good storage. Um, you can fit anything, like a shotgun, if you have one, or... I put sweaters, extra sweaters in mine. Um, like seasonal clothes. So. Okay, this is one of our favorite parts of the Sears Camper. This is a huge um, overhead window. And I'll show you the view. That's really pretty. 
Anyway, so if you're laying here and just stare at the clouds and the trees, it's really nice. When it's dark, the stars. So this is a really, really nice feature. We love it. It also has the, the shades like the, all the windows. Behind here is more storage. This whole area, you lift up and there's storage under there. Um, we keep stuff, again, that we rarely use because it's kind of hard to get to. What else is hard to get to? What else is hard to get to? Mm -hmm. Oh, <laughs> so guess where our outlets are? Here, oh, there's another one. So you get like a wiry mess in your bed because your plugs, you have your 120 here, you have um, 12 volt outlet and then USBs, but they're in the middle of your bed. It would be so nice if we each had a little center, charging center on our nightstands. This is really frustrating to live with, but we're dealing. And then more storage is in our little nightstands. Um, these lights we hate because they're <laughs> ugly and blue and they're reading lights, but they give like no light, so you can't even read with them. So we use them as a, our headphone hangers. Okay, so this is actually pretty nice. This is pretty deep. It goes all the way back, um, really deep. So it's really great storage. We each have our own personal ones, so we just put whatever in there. Like, there's so many random things I have in here, but it's just nice to have your own little personal space. And also, just the lock. I have another big cabinet. We also have speakers up here on both sides. We have two windows, obviously, and they're also really nice to let in light. A lot of light gets in here, which is nice. I'd say that's it. I'd say that's it for the camper, right? Think so what is this one next thing Ooh, zoom okay well we should close it off together Sit Sayonara on. and farewell so i think that concludes our tour slash review um we hope that i answered all of your questions and that you enjoyed seeing our little home. I know a lot of you wanted to see it and I'm glad that we finally got to um, take the time to do this for you. We promised a lot of videos. Yeah. So maybe We're giving the people what they want. And yeah. Ask for them, maybe we'll make them. Yeah, just know it, it takes a lot of effort and time to do this and you know, we have lives. So yeah, if you have any questions or something we didn't cover, um, that you need answered, please just comment and we will definitely get back to you. So, yeah. Bye-bye. Um, Bye. -bye. Bye.